Hey yo, Chef Corso, Monty Boca. It is a drizzly, drizz day here in Seattle, Washington. We're underneath a big Western red cedar and welcome to Mexican night. Yes. La fiesta de Monty Boca de Mexicana esta noche. Let's get cooking. I've got my party, party quarantine smock on and we are gonna make two recipes today a stone smash guacamole and a tamale bowl that are great for home cooking or great options for the trail. Welcome to Mappy Hour. Welcome to North Face. Welcome to Monte Boca, wherever you are. Again, I hope you're doing safe. As this goes along, it's just getting a little bit weird. So you need to have a little bit of fun and a little bit of fiesta to keep things going on this random rainy hump day. Don't know where the, don't know what the weather is where you guys are, but hopefully it's better than here because it's been pretty gross today. So, um, what we're going to do here is first we're going to make our stone smash guacamole. And you can also call this guacamole if you like. That's my, my nephew actually gave it that term. But it's a really fun, snackable trailgate recipe to be able to make for a group. And that's the thing with all these recipes. We go outside to be able to connect, to have fun with each other. I want food to be a, a really strong, fun component of your trips when you go outside and have it be shareable. So you're not just meal planning by yourself and having dry, salty packaged meal options. So let's zoom in here. So we've already got our avocado already chopped up. And I suggest that you do not pack in a rock, but you can find a rock in a river or a lake and just give it a nice wash. And some easy packable ingredients that I'm gonna add to this for kind of a, a quick, and, quick and dirty option. So we've got some salt. got a couple lime wedges. Nice, gonna put that in my pack out bag. Got some garlic powder. And we've got somebody chopping down a tree over there. Not on Earth Day, no. <laughs> Not on Earth Day. Happy Earth Day, everybody. Hope you guys are at least enjoying, enjoying the planet or enjoying the earth in any way that you can, whether that's your backyard or your local park. And then I've got some cilantro, which I'm just going to do a rough, rough chop or a rough rip here. And you might be thinking that this is not going to last that many days on the trail. And I will say it will last one or two days. If you are taking this out there, make sure to use it on day one or day two, because it can get a little bit weird as the day, as the trip goes along but don't be afraid of taking fresh ingredients when you go outside. They can last for longer than you think. Last thing we're gonna do, which is, is very optional, is a little bit of spice, which is Tapatio packet. So I raided the taco shop, burrito shop. These are great options to take along. Give you that little, little bit of kick. I wouldn't suggest going too spicy when you are hiking and camping. I mean, I love really spicy food, but it's actually the worst time to have really blazing hot things because you need more water to quench your, to, 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 to quench the heat. And you usually have to go pump it or go to the river or somehow get it. And, you know, getting an extra liter of water to quench your, your, your spicy guacamole, probably not the best option, but a little bit can be pretty nice. So then just gonna smash it up with my rock here. Rockamole. And this is a traditional way of making guacamole with a mortar and pestle. So we're just doing kind of a random, random stone campy hack around it. But this is a really fun recipe for the kiddos. Get them outside, get them rocking, getting them smashing. And it doesn't take very long and you've got some rustic guacamole. And other thing, really great to pack, bag of chips. Doesn't really matter if they get squished in the process because you're outside. And there you go, stone smash guacamole, rockamole. Ah, oh, awesome. Nobody's gonna argue with you if you bring that. Also, taking this to uh, on a trip so this is obviously a larger bag of chips you can take a smaller bag of chips 
If you do have four to six people, this will easily be gone because most likely you're hungry and you need a snack. But if you do have some left over, this can turn into breakfast really easily. You can make chili quiles tomorrow morning with a little bit of salsa, a little bit of squeeze of lime, uh, maybe some, some chicken, powdered eggs, real eggs. You can, you can have chips for breakfast as long as you put eggs with it <laughs> um, for chili quiles. And Monty Bo check out montyboca.com forward slash recipes for a chili quiles recipe. And shout out to Below, who's, a, who's filming today. She's one of our recipe testers. And the other thing about Monty Boca is, you know, we provide recipes, meal plans, and cookbooks for your trips. But every recipe is tested by a member of our Monty Boca recipe tester community. So they go out on their trips, they make sure the recipes work, send them back to me, and then they upload it to the community where recipe bakes. We have 140 trail tested recipes that most of them are free with a quick, easy download. So check these out, but also check out other options. If you are getting bored, you wanna do a little experimenting when you are at home, uh, just sheltering, you're like, I don't know what to do with these beans or this tomato paste or anything. Check us out, because we've, we've got some good options for you. So hope you enjoy the guacamole. So we are gonna move over to our tamale bowl. Yes, one of my favorites. And to continue with our fiesta theme here. So ingredients for our tamale bowl. So we have a, this is an Anaheim pepper that I already chopped up. This is a shallot, but you could easily do a red bell pepper, onion, uh, zucchini, other veggies. We have got some chili powder. Chili powders are a great way to add really fresh, tasty flavor on the trail with very little weight. We've got some cornmeal, polenta or grits, which we'll talk about that in a second. And I've got a little bit of queso fresco and we're gonna need a little bit of oil and we'll go with a little bit of salt too. So the thing about tamales and the thing about cornmeal and grits is it's all the same. So you have, this is a really, really fun tip for you. So these are, this is cornmeal. You also have grits. You also have polenta. You also have masa and you also have semolina. So five things that are actually all the same thing. They are all ground corn, just in different grind and coming from a different country. So if you're making a tamale versus making polenta, it's actually the same base. You're just doing different things to it. So I, this is actually one of my absolute favorite backpacking ingredients because it is extremely light. It hydrates and cooks really fast. Make sure to get the five minute or 10 minute quick cooking grits. There are some grits of polenta out there that take 20 to 30 minutes. And that's less bueno when you are uh, after a long day and it's raining and you really need to eat. But taking this along, it's also really versatile. So we're turning this into Mexican tonight with some lime and some chili powder, but you could easily turn it into Tuscan and do sun-dried tomato and garlic and oregano. And also turn it into one of my favorites that's gotten me through multiple trips through the Olympics and through parts of Oregon is bacon cheddar grits. So you bring, out, bring along pre-cooked bacon, a little bit of cheddar, a little bit of green onion, maybe some butter, some extra oil, and you have an amazing meal that is so filling and so satisfying with like no weight and no time. So let's cook it up. So my burner situation today is pretty straightforward. I've got a little bit over a one liter MSR chimney stove, and we are gonna add a little bit of oil and we are gonna saute up our veggies first, just for a few minutes. Already got a nice sizzle there. And this is also a really great recipe because it starts vegan and it starts vegetarian. So if you are eating plant-based out there for the for the earth or you just love vegetables, but you might have a, a, a crew of people of four to six that all have different dietary restrictions. So you can make a pot that is vegetarian or vegan at the start, then go ahead and throw some extra chicken in there. Then go ahead and throw your cheddar cheese or your, your queso fresco on there. So you can make everybody happy without having a huge pain in the ass in order to make five different meals for five different people. So we're going to saute that up for just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of salt. 
and some chili powder. If your chili powder already has salt in it, then go ahead and delete the salt. So a couple tablespoons of chili powder. Oh man. Stir that up really quick. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some water. And for our polenta ratio, we are looking for about a three to one water to polenta. And you can always add more water. But what I've got here today is around a half to three quarter cup. And you might be thinking like that is not very much. And that's really not gonna fill me up or even me and my buddy up. But this is gonna hydrate really fast and really easy. And about a half a cup goes a long way to be a really filling meal which is another another reason why it is an amazingly easy, versatile ingredient in order to take on your trip. So we're just gonna let that hydrate and come up to a boil and it's gonna thicken up. We'll hold on to that. And while that's coming up to a simmer, we're gonna do a tasting. Yes, another tasting. And it is fiesta time, happy hour time, so we're gonna taste some drinks. And what we've got today, get the other one in here, come on now. We've got two Coronas. Too soon? I don't think so. Okay, so first off, we've got Corona Familia which I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but this is Corona in a brown bottle. And I will tell you, I've had this before, but we're gonna taste it just to make sure it's good, is Corona in a clear bottle, it's not that great because it's already skunked. What happens is the light hits the beer in the clear bottle and it skunks really, really quickly. So the overall flavor isn't that great. But when you have Corona Familia in the brown bottle, it helps protect the beer from that light and doesn't give it that skunky, Go. Of course, hit it with a little bit of lime. Cheers. Cheers. Let's check on the polenta. Mm, polenta is bubbling up. Beautiful. I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. So how does Corona Familia taste in comparison to regular Corona or Pacifico, Nego Modelo, any of the Mexican cervezas out there? I mean, it tastes like cerveza. It tastes like a great Mexican Pilsner, Mexican lager, extremely refreshing, but it does not taste skunky. So give this a try. They also have a big 32 ounce fella that's really great for sharing. Or if you're drinking by yourself, I won't judge you doing the, the big daddy. is almost done. We're gonna let that hydrate for just another minute or two, but see how thick that's gotten? This can get a little bit clumpy, so make sure to stir it. But great color from that chili powder. And this is gonna to continue to hydrate over the next five, 10, 15 minutes because it's dry and it needs moisture and it's gonna to continue to suck it up. And also I'm dry and I need moisture. So we're gonna try Corona Hard Seltzer. And I know you guys, just about everybody out there is loving the hard seltzers right now. The Truly, the uh, White Claw, but Corona might be poor timing for them, but they have launched a seltzer, hard seltzer uh, of their own this season. And I haven't tried this before, so this is really interesting. And I also used to develop beverages like this, so I'm very curious. This is Tropical Lime Corona Hard Seltzer. 0% juice, 90 calories. Um, How many carbs? How many carbs? Good question. Uh, zero carbs, zero protein. All right, so pretty straightforward. It's flavored hard alcohol. Oh. Excuse me. <laughs> Cheers. Wherever you are. Look 
broke off into the woods. Wow. Uh, does it taste like Corona? It does not taste like Corona. It tastes like lime. It tastes like a lightly flavored lime beverage. I don't get a whole lot of tropical, but I also don't get a whole big pile of lime squeezed on my mouth. It's very refreshing. You could easily crush this in like no time, especially after a hike. If you're trail gating, this would be down in like no problem. Overall, pretty good. Uh, very, very, very refreshing. Light on the flavor, which can be good. Some people like a lot of flavor. Um, but overall, overall, not that bad. They have some other flavors out there, so give that a whirl. All right, back to our polenta, or excuse me, our tamale bowl. And if you're just joining us, we have made some stone mat guacamole today, and we're just finishing up a tamale polenta bowl. Okay. So to finish this up, we'll just bowl this up and see how thick that's gotten with just around a half to a quarter cup of polenta. But look at how much that made. I mean, that's enough for easily two, three bowls. In ways that I am gonna finish that off is a little bit of queso fresco, or you could easily do one of these cute little cheddar packets. Those go a long way. I'm also gonna do a nice blop of our stone smash guacamole. and a nice fresh squeeze of lime that'll go a long way to give us some nice freshness you could throw this in your water on your longer treks to give you a little bit of a flavor difference or you could easily pack it out but there is our tamale bowl quick cook polenta cooking up in five or ten minutes really great filling hearty tasty options for mexican night on the trail going to taste this up really quick. Mm. Lime really helps. A little bit of queso fresco really gives it some nice creaminess. But again, this is a really great blank, blank slate. You could add protein to this, add more veggies to this, but give polenta, give quick cook grits a try for both breakfast, lunch, or a quick dinner. Deconstructed tamales on De the trail. Deconstructed tamale bowl. Um, Hope you enjoyed our quick little fiesta here in the rainy woods today. Stay tuned for our next session, which will be on Saturday, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern. And we are cooking up a backpacking classic, elevated. We're gonna make jambalaya. We're gonna make jambalaya in around 10 or 15 minutes and not out of a package. So if you're curious about how to elevate some of those backcountry classics, tune in for jambalaya on Saturday morning I know it's not breakfast, but you can probably throw an egg on it and make it make it breakfast. Everybody grab your old bay and get ready. Cal Cambodian cowboy, if you're out there, please be here on Saturday because we are using old bay all day. So uh, check out montyboca.com for other great recipes, packing tips about stoves, how do you uh, pack up a recipe with fresh ingredients, other great recipes. Check out mappyhour.org if you're uh, in different cities around the country. They are a great resource in this time for some fun outdoor information. And also when we come out of this, some really great stuff for uh, happy hours uh, uh, around the country. And again, thanks to North Face for help putting these on. Wherever you are, hope you're doing okay on hump day, but uh, get out there. And thanks for coming along. We'll see you Saturday. Boca Boca.